in the beginning was the Word, and from that sprang life. And therefore, there's a direct correlation and relationship between sound and life, and our ability to understand and work with sound has a, a, a direct relationship then to our ability to relate to life. Ninth Symphony, Beethoven. This works. Sound is also an incredible focusing agent in that movement. So with conscious intent, you can, uh, in terms of healing, you can bring about uh, a much more focused uh, healing at a given point in time and space. I was just wanted to stay in whatever I was in, you know, like it was so, it was more than relaxing, it was just like, like he asked me how I felt afterwards and I said that I was not just being pushed up or pushed down, I was just kind of in the middle of something and it's super, kind of super comfortable. I felt like I was in like my own, I mean like a gen sandwich or something, it was very comfortable. <laughs> Sound is having a direct effect to everything in life and our understanding of that is increasing and our ability to open to it and allow it is increasing. So the Fibonacci sequence is um, something which appears in living systems um, everywhere. Uh, we can find that in, uh, in the arrangement of seeds on the, on, the, on the pine cone. The other interesting component of this sequence is that the, the ratio of two consecutive number in the sequence, say those two, all those two, all those two, would be such that the ratio of those numbers will go closer and closer to what they called in the esoteric tradition to the golden ratio or golden mean. It was just like, you know, just like magnets, you know, when they push apart and stuff. It was just like that tightness. It was just good. And, um, and I wanted to stay in it. Um, so I'm using this sequence of tuning forks on what they call in traditional Chinese medicine as the eight extraordinary vessels. Uh, this is accessing um, something which is um, formed uh, when the embryo is being formed after the first three cell divisions. The eight extraordinary vessels are accessing the oldest component of who we are as a human incarnation. Um, because of that, the, the sequence of tuning forks are um, allow, I believe, and, and I actually I have demonstrated that in, uh, in um, sessions, that people can actually transfer their consciousness in other, quote, dimensions. I liked where I was, where I wasn't talking to myself. It wasn't me talking out loud, and it wasn't even me talking to myself. You know, kind of going over things, or trying to understand things, or put them together. And I like that spot. I think that's what I, I don't know if I've learned that, but I liked experiencing that. In order to really comprehend a wave, we have to think spherically that a, any wave as it is established through sound or light or any other influence energetically affects everything else in the universe because at that moment in time it goes out spherically and therefore it's not just affecting what's in front of us it's affecting everything it's moving mainstream fast the, the, the sound healing, the use of tuning forks, the, the use of gongs, the use of singing bowls is really moving mainstream, at a, I believe, at a fast pace. Um, it's working. It's just the key, the, the bottom line of it. It's just working. Uh, there are nurses who work in, uh, in ER emergency rooms uh, in, in major hospitals around, around the United States where they have uh, two, three set of tuning forks in, the, in their pockets and they use that on people who just hop off the ambulance on, on heart attack or things like that. And it just works. It's simply a matter of finding that which you resonate with. And you can resonate at many different vibrational frequencies. So if at a given moment in time you wish to be activated, then that might mean hip hop. Yo. If at a given That's moment right. in time you want to move no into an, an inner peace, then that might mean the uh, Be Beethoven's fifth or ninth. So uh, sound can be used for all kinds of different activations. 
And something that I like to use a lot are the, the Tibetan singing bowls. So the, those are bowls which I'm using on, the, on chakras specifically for the purpose of, uh, of balancing a chakra system. And I'm also using, using that a lot in the framework of, um, say, the moving out of old energies, to put it uh, mildly or gently. So we have this movement that is a movement of science and we have a movement that is a movement of spirit. And those two are coming together. And from that place, healing again can happen. Even when the sound came and I could tell that it was coming in and out, that the, that the vibrations were stronger or weaker, I wouldn't focus on that stuff. I was kind of feeling it and just, I'd feel it and then I'd go right, not away, but I wouldn't be thinking about it or going over it again and again. I don't know, I guess it wasn't a dream, it was more just kind of, I don't know, it was just, just being there and just having things just kind of fly by a little bit. The importance of sound now is as important as it was at the very beginning. And this is what we're beginning to touch upon as we move closer to our understanding and our feeling of sound.